Welcome to Timeless Textiles, Lenny. Oh, thank you. And welcome to the southern hemisphere of this planet. <laughs> First time you've been down this way? It sure is, yeah. Never been across the equator. Well, you've survived. Yeah, well, it's been fun. I've enjoyed it. It's wonderful to have you here at Timeless Textiles with your exhibition, Life in the Universe. So thank you very much for coming down. Yeah, thank you. I'd like you to talk a little bit about your work. The pieces in the show, they're all made out of metal mesh, and I've been working that, with that material since uh, 1983. And that was my last year of graduate school, and I kind of accidentally kind of discovered the material and started working with it. I, I like the flexibility of it, uh, the fact that it was a woven material, um, had a lot of negative and positive space, so you could construct pieces uh, out of this kind of real flimsy material, but you can make structures out of it that were very kind of self-supporting in things. So um, I just really got interested in kind of the repetitive activity of making, uh, where I just needed a pair of pliers and scissors, and I could make fairly good-sized sculptures out of that material. So I didn't need a lot of kind of fabrication equipment or, or whatever that I was using when I was in undergraduate and graduate school. And uh, so it was, it was a very simple and direct process. And then I, the inspiration yeah. for this exhibition? Uh, I've, uh, I've always been kind of inspired by natural forms of one type or another. Uh, these are uh, probably the primary inspiration for a lot of the pieces are microscopic organisms and stuff. And I have uh, <coughs> a few of the pieces. I was inspired by looking at images of, of uh, like yellow fever virus and the Ebola uh, virus and just kind of fascinated with the, the kind of microscopic images of that. And then I used, uh, I've been working with <coughs> excuse me, a propane torch uh, to create imagery on the mesh itself. And so I kind of use that as an inspiration for the imagery. So in terms of that, you're actually burning the mesh to get these beautiful patterns, particularly in your uh, life in the universe screens. Right, yeah, that's the technique I use. Um, it's just uh, the heat itself, depending on how close you are and how hot the, the mesh gets, will get different tones. And I kind of get between kind of an amber, a little bit of yellow to burgundy and blue and gray. So that's kind of the range I can work with. So you just have to kind of be aware of when you're doing it, uh, what the temperature is on the mesh itself. In some cases, like to get a blue, the, the mesh actually is turning warmth, like the heat, that's what you see is the heat, then you have to kind of back off, and then and when you back off, the, the mesh itself is blue. So you can really use it as, you know, very much kind of a painting and mark making medium. And do you paint using the flame, or have you mapped it out already? On uh, mostly I just do it freehand. It's kind of like being an abstract expressionist painter. Uh, I just kind of start and let it kind of take me where it wants to go. You can uh, use like a magic marker, a felt tip, and actually mark on uh, the screen to map out some areas. And I've done that on some pieces, but for the most part, I just kind of start and just kind of go where it takes me. The Life in the Universe screen series, you've got some with none of the silicon, but in some you put um, a range of dots. Mm -hmm. It works very well, doesn't it? Yeah, I kind of use the silicone as another kind of textural element and visual element. And when you, uh, as far as lighting the pieces, uh, what that does is you can cast shadows on the wall behind the piece. Otherwise, when your uh, uh, light goes through, the mesh doesn't really show up on the wall, but something on the mesh like that, that's more of a solid shape, will. And I also like the, when you press what I do, I press the silicone through the mesh so it almost looks like beads on the outside. And I like that kind of textural thing that it does. The uh, Bowler series have uh, got a very hieroglyphic look to them. The shapes are very oh, unusual uh -huh. and sit well yeah. together. Yeah. Um, yeah, most of the shapes all started with basically a square. Um, but depending on how, where you start to connect the piece, it can turn it into kind of an angular kind of piece. 
And I also modeled the mesh a bit just with my hand to create kind of ridges and, and create a little bit more of a topography on the screen itself. So that ad also added an element to, uh, to the piece. Or that. And certainly in this exhibition, the shadowing effect is very beautiful. Yeah, they're all, they all come out of the wall a little bit, uh, so they're in relief. Uh, and then with uh, the lighting, you really bring out the shadow play on the wall, which adds another dimension to the work, which is nice. You mentioned that you take inspiration, particularly for this exhibition, from microorganisms. On the whole, is there books or music or other people's artwork that inspires you, that keeps you fresh? Uh, well, if I decide I want to, uh, like in the case of the Ebola thing, I just, you know, I was curious about that, so I basically consulted Google, I guess, uh, looking for images uh, of that microscopic uh, organism, and then thinking, well, how could I kind of replicate that I get with the burning on the mesh? So I'll do that kind of research. Uh, and then I was, that just got me interested in other virus forms that I could, uh, kind of incorporate into the work. So that kind of started that series. And as far as music, I, I tend to listen to jazz. And I, uh, uh, there is, the thing about jazz is, I guess, is all the improvisation. And the pieces here in the gallery are pretty improvised pieces. In some cases, they're kind of recycled from other pieces, and I'll change them into another form. And so I like that kind of um, transformative thing that you can get by, you know, you might have started with one idea um, and then later come back to it and another idea is, comes out of that. And I guess I think of uh, viruses and natural life and all that as ever changing and mutating and moving to something else. So I kind of treat the pieces like that. And, just in terms of how this uh, show looks here in the gallery, I didn't really have a preconception of what that would be until I got here. I just uh, knew I had enough pieces. Uh, I knew I was going to arrange it in kind of an installation, but I let the space and also how I was at the time being here uh, to help determine what the piece would look like when I was done. I think a very fine f example of the recycling is the swarming bees that came out of fever mites. Yeah, the, and fever mites actually came out of um, another piece I did, which was uh, part of the Yellow Fever series, which was actually, uh, I think there were about 20 squares, about foot square pieces that I put together as a hanging screen. And so it's flat, basically. Uh, and then I had that around for a while and I thought, well, I'll turn that into a three-dimensional piece. And so I made all the fever mites uh, from those squares and the, actually cut out pieces from that square, which were basically the outer edges where I cut into, then become, became the piece behind me, uh, which was uh, the, kind of the B piece. And um, it's just a nice kind of I like reusing things that way and, and kind of re recycling ideas and stuff and let them change. So who knows what they might turn into next. <laughs> Beware. <laughs> yeah. And Lenny, you're uh, now exploring some work using uh, glass and doing some joint work with that glass. Right. Yeah, I've been uh, working some with a glass, or well, he's a sculptor, a uh, glass artist in Washington State. Uh, he lives about a half an hour from me, uh, Rick Allen. And he, he does work that's primarily, uh, he deals with kind of space imagery in a lot of his work, uh, rocket ships and, you know, very kind of fanciful work. And uh, we just did a show together a few months, well, it was back in April, uh, where we collaborated and I made uh, mesh forms and he blew uh, hot glass into those forms. Yeah, and that was a, just a real rewarding um, uh, collaboration and it opened up another world for me uh, how to have work with mesh and seeing that transformed by another artist and uh, it was a it was a very fun process and we were both I think getting a lot out of it and hope to continue it doing mm. some more work that way. I think it's very inspiring to meet an artist who has stayed with a particular art form 
and just kept working it like you have for mm. almost decades now, isn't it? Yeah, well, it's been since 83. I mean, I've done other kind of mixed media work in that time, uh, but the uh, mesh has really stayed with me during that whole uh, stint, I guess. And yeah, you just kind of get deeper and deeper into what the material can do. And you have kind of a, a language behind it, or a knowledge behind it, I guess, of what you've done before that you can kind of draw upon. And then you, but you keep advancing it each time. Because um, I used to, when I first was in grad, right after graduate school, I was doing all these organic shapes out of strips of mesh. And then uh, I stopped doing that. And years later, uh, I think it was back in, it was 2004, I believe, I came back to that work and you you kind of pick it up again but at a little different place and your aesthetic is a little different and I also refined it much more. So it's nice to kind of cycle back, pick things up and kind of you still keep moving it forward. And I like that uh, part of it. And I do like staying with the material that long because uh, that whole Zen thing about the 10,000 hours of doing something, it does take a long time to really understand something well enough where it becomes a little more second nature, what you can do with it. And I like that part. And it clearly shows in the work yeah, that you're producing. So if you were to be talking to a, a young, younger artist who's just starting off, what is it that you would say to them about working with mesh? Uh, working with mesh... Um, Just kind of uh, try and go where it takes you, I guess. Uh, I know each individual person, you know, they bring their own life and their own skills and everything into the work. And it's such a sort of flexible material that way that uh, I think you can find a lot of self-expression in the medium. I mean, you can work at it very tightly or you can work at it extremely loosely. And I try to kind of I kind of try to do both things, but uh, I think it's a very expressive uh, material to work with. Uh, and that's why I've kind of stayed with it for this, this length of time. Well, I must say, we're incredibly lucky and grateful that you've stayed with it and that you've come and exhibited here in Newcastle at Thomas Textiles. So it's with great honor. Oh, thank you. Well, it's been a pleasure, and I've really enjoyed my stay here. Thank you.